Hello everyone, we are back for another live stream and I'm pretty excited for this one because I wanted to do some Valentine's inspired illustrations here. So I do have um, these line arts available over on my Patreon, um, but feel free to do your own or um, follow along if you want. You can always screenshot this and kind of try to copy the images as well. So I'm just gonna take a minute and just tell you a funny story while people are coming in. Um, so earlier I was trying to just play with some of the settings for the stream here and I ended up going live by mistake, not realizing it. So I had to cancel that live stream and then I had to repost this one again. So I hope you guys were able to find this live stream, but I can't believe I went live by accident, totally didn't realize. Um, but we're here and we're going to get going. So I hope everybody is doing well this morning. And quickly, I'm just going to run over my supplies here. So I'm using the Paul Rubens uh, 24 pan set watercolors again. I actually really like these and I am going to do a more in-depth review on these. Um, but I want to get some more use out of them and I'm really liking them. And I'm loving this little pan set here too for mixing watercolors. I've got my Arches 9 by 12 watercolor block here. Use whatever paper you have. I've also got a couple of brushes on the side here, my number eight round, six round, and then I've got a separate eight round. If I need to just soften any edges or anything, I really like the Princeton Neptune brushes for that. And um, like I was mentioning, you can get this line art over on my Patreon for the lowest tier, but feel free to go ahead and screenshot and then just try to copy your own line art. I've got a jar, a couple of jars of water over here and my kneaded eraser. And I think I'm gonna start up here with these um, cookies. So I'm just gonna lighten my lines just a little bit and then we'll get going. Especially the lines on the outside. So for this, I was picturing like a cookie with some icing on top. So that's what we're gonna try to do here. And maybe if somebody could just put in chat real quick if you can hear everything and see everything okay just to make sure. And I like to dab when I'm using my kneaded eraser, um, just because I find it doesn't get rid of all of the lines, but it removes the, the graphite that's sitting on top of the paper. So it does lighten it significantly. And I don't mind if a little bit of the graphite is showing through, that's totally fine. This is watercolor. All right, so we'll just quickly get some of that off. And I could have done this ahead of time, but I wanted you to see my drawings like a little bit darker so you'd know what we were doing. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix up sort of like a cookie color for this. And I think I'm gonna use this yellow ochre as a main base color. And then I'll probably put um, some of this burnt sienna in. So if you just have a very light yellow brown and then a bit of a darker brown, um, you can make these cookies, of course, whatever color you want. So I'm gonna start mixing up a little bit of this yellow ochre over here. And I need to mix up enough to cover the cookie. So I'm grabbing a little bit of water too and adding some water to this, just so I'll have enough uh, paint. And I'm feeling this is a little too like yellowy brown. So I may go ahead and just add a little bit of that um, burnt set sienna into it, burned sienna, just to give it a little bit more of a cookie texture color. So something like that, it doesn't have to be perfect. And I'm just gonna, actually I'll grab my jar of water here and I'm just gonna add enough in so that it can cover my cookies and we can always mix up some more after. No big deal. And I'm gonna try to get this around the icing. So we'll leave that spot free for right now. So I'm just gonna lay this in. If you want your this layer to stay a little bit wet longer, then you can go ahead and wet the cookie area first. Cause I will try to drop in a little bit of dark colors um, before this completely dries. 
if I can. So I may even come back over and just drop a little bit more color in before it starts drying. I'm just fixing up some of my edges and then if I've got a little bit left over I can just dab my brush off on some towel or some paper towel and just pick up any of that extra pigment and then I am going to grab a little bit of this um, darker darker brown color here and just mix it slightly in here in the corner and I'm just going to drop it a little bit around where the icing might be just in a few areas and if I've got a little bit too much on my brush I'm just going to come and dab a little bit off just where we have a little bit of shadowing and maybe towards the outside a little bit and I'm just going to let this blend and do its own thing so I'm sort of like kind of laying my brush down and then skipping a couple of areas and laying it down. And then I might pick a couple areas where it's a little bit darker. And then as this blends, that will just give the, the cookie a little bit of texture where like maybe the sides were starting to brown as it was cooking on the pan and there's some shadowing from the icing you know but it doesn't have to be perfect and I kind of like when it's sort of a little um, imperfect like that and if you feel you have any areas that are getting a little out of hand just dab your brush off and you can kind of just go in and push that pigment around but I think I kind of like it like that so we'll move on and do the same thing with our next one so I'm just going to grab our base cookie color here Now this one's a little bit bigger, so you may want to wet the area first if you want to have time to kind of drop some color in. And I'm hoping for this stream we'll be able to get through all of these images, so I may be going a little bit quickly, um, but if you have any questions, please feel free to drop them in the chat and I will try my best to answer them. But feel free to always come back and watch the replay as well. So I'm just going to continue on here so I don't get like a hard edge while I'm doing this. And I kind of drew these cookies a little bit more imperfect. So it's not like straight lines for the cookies. They're kind of a little jagged. The um, icings not perfectly in the center of them sometimes the edges are a little bit weird but I think that gives them a little bit of character too so I'm just going to come in and just drop a little bit more of that pigment down in this area before it starts drying just to give me more time just drop any pigment down and then I'm gonna grab that brown like burnt I think it's called burned sienna color and I'm just mixing it slightly with that yellow color we were using and I'm gonna do the same thing just drop this into a few places might want to grab just a little bit more of it Just to create some shadowing underneath here just in a few places again maybe some areas a little bit more so maybe we'll have more shadow kind of coming to this side of things and a little bit less on this side so I kind of just dab my brush here and there you choose where you want it and then I'm going to grab a little bit more 
and we're going to come around some of the edges and do the same thing. And that's just going to help um, give this depth so it'll look more 3D, like more round as well. And when I think about illustrations, I'm not trying to think about like perfect artwork either. Like I want this to look realistic in the end. So we may do a little bit of layering, um, especially on something like these macaroons down here. Um, but I want it to, you know, to have look like a cookie, um, but it doesn't have to be perfect. And I may just drop in because this is a little bit bigger of a cookie. I might just drop in a few little spots here and there where maybe the brown kind of comes up into the cookie a little bit more. But again, I don't want, I, this doesn't need to be perfect because it is more of an illustration. All right, so we'll go back to our main cookie color here. So this was a little bit of the yellow ochre with a bit of the burnt sienna in it. And we'll do this last cookie. And I'd love to know down in the comments, even if you're watching the replay of this, uh, what kind of stuff would you like to see coming up on these live streams? I'm gonna just do whatever I feel like doing like in the moment, but if you have anything specific that you'd like to see, I would love to know, um, because how else will I know if you don't tell me what you'd like to see in these live streams? But I wanna do, you know, a little bit more tutorial style and then, um, maybe some first impressions, some reviews. I kind of want to do some more loose florals because those were really fun too, even though I'm not the best at them. Um, but you're never going to get good at anything unless you practice it. So again, just dropping a little bit more pigment in here just so it has time to stay wet before I get there. But yeah, I'd love to know in the comments below what you guys would love to see in the future. Again, just coming along, dropping pigment in, and I'm coming back to this edge so I don't get that hard edge. So I'm always switching my edges. And just connecting that. And then again, just dropping in pigment, making sure everything's nice and wet. But if I have too much, I will dab my brush off, come back, pick that up. And then we'll go ahead and grab that burnt sienna color. And just mixing it slightly again with that yellow ochre. And we'll come along and just start dropping this in. And again, if I have a little bit too much um, water, if it's spreading a little bit too much, I just dab it off. And again, not touching every little spot, missing some areas out. Some I might want to be a little bit darker than others. some of these edges too. And you can really just have fun with this. So you can put in as much or as little as you want. Really make it your own. And I'm just running the tip of my brush along the edge. So sometimes when I tap it like this, it spreads a little bit more. And if I just run it along the edge, it spreads where I lift 
the tip of the brush, so I'm kind of using that to my advantage if I want it to spread a little bit more, if I want it more to stay in place. I might grab just a little bit more in a couple of places because I feel like this is starting to get a little bit more watered down than some of the other ones. I might just pick a few places here where I want it to be a little bit darker because I'm just starting to lose some of that. So again, not, not being perfect, just picking certain areas. And I think I like that. Okay, so we will let those dry before we go ahead and uh, work on the icing area. So since I've got these colors going, I might jump over and start working on our little bear here. And again, I'm just going to just lighten some of these sketch marks. And I'm not sure if I wanna make the bear lighter or darker in color. So let me know in chat, oops, I'm trying not to move this out of frame too. Um, if you wanna see a darker bear or a lighter bear, or I'll just start throwing colors down and see how it goes. And some of the lines around the edges, I'm gonna get a little bit more of the graphite off. Um, just so they don't show as much. Okay. And just getting rid of that. Okay, so I think I wanna make him like a, a beigey brown color with a little bit more um, dark brown. So maybe what I'll do is just mix this up completely and I might add a little bit. Um, so, so far we've been using this yellow ochre and the burnt sienna. I might add maybe a touch of this umber in just to sort of warm this color up just a little bit. Um, so to me, this one is more of like a burnt sienna type color. So I would use, if you have a yellow ochre and a burnt sienna, mix those two together to kind of get something like this. And I feel like I'm gonna to have to mix up a bit more of this. So I'm just adding water in there so I have lots of water, because our bear is a little bit bigger. And then I'm just gonna add these two colors. So just the yellow ochre and a burnt sienna type color. So something like that. So we'll get sort of like a color mixed between those. And if you're ever unsure, you can always grab like a test piece of paper and just try it on the side and see if you like that color. I think that's what I'll go with right now. Just grabbing a little bit more water. And I think what I'll do is, I think I'm gonna start with his ears and I'm just gonna put this color in and then we'll drop a little bit of dark color in. And then we can always come back because um, I want the outer part of the ears to be a little bit darker. So I'm just gonna cover everything in this first layer. And because this is a pretty small area, I'm just gonna jump over and do this ear too before we start dropping some other colors in. Now, if you've uh, drawn your bear out a little bit smaller or whatever you're working on, um, if it is smaller, you might be able to wet the whole thing and kind of work a little bit, but sometimes it's easier to work like one area to one area. I'm just sucking up some of that color. Then I'm gonna grab um, a little bit of a darker brown color here. And I'm just getting the tip of my brush wet. And it's sort of a little bit warm. And uh, I'm just gonna dab it off 
and then I'm going to start dropping this in at the base um, because this is where the shadow would be. And I'm just going to drop that in and just kind of let it do its thing right now. And then if I want to smooth out any of these areas, I just come along with a damp brush and just kind of tap at them. But I just want a little bit of darkness in there from where the head would be round, so the ears would be kind of coming in and connecting. And then I think we'll start working on his arms and um, his body and his legs, and then we'll come back and do the little face after. So I'm just going to do the same thing. We'll just work at one little area at a time just to make it easier. And I'm trying to strategically work in sections like this at a time so I don't uh, end up getting my hand in paint areas because <laughs> that can be annoying. And I'm trying to stick with similar colors throughout this painting so even though We've got a few different objects going on. I want to try to keep um, similar colors throughout all of them, with the exception of these, because I do want to do those in a few different um, colors. But I'll be trying to reuse colors kind of everywhere. So that's why with the cookies and the bear, we're going to be using similar colors. I'm just using my size 8 brush and for most of my paintings I find the size 8 brush is good enough even when I want to do a little bit of detail uh, because it's got such a fine point on it. Just grabbing a little bit more of that darker brown color. So like a bit of a burnt umber if you have that would work. A darker warmer brown and I just want to get this in again um, maybe just dab that off a little bit in some of these areas where there might be a little bit of shadowing like under this heart for instance and around his face and that might be a little dark we can take a little bit off And I'm just trying to come in and fix a little bit of the lines around the heart too because I did draw them out a little bit wildly because he's sort of squishing in the heart there. Now one thing I do notice with these paints is they do dry down like quite light so you can kind of see up there so maybe we will keep this a little bit darker and just see the difference. I'm just kind of fixing a little bit of this because it's sort of like a straight line. All right, we will move on. Let's move on to his little feet since that's not connected to anything. Now I think, do I want to do, I might even do like these little areas a little bit lighter. So what I'll do is come in with a even watery uh, version of this, do a layer, then we'll dry it and then we'll come back uh, and do another layer just to make it easy so I only have to paint around that area once. Because I do want the little like circles on his feet here to be a little bit lighter. Just grabbing a little bit more water there. A 
Okay. And yeah, no, that's not quite dry yet because I thought we'll start on the face, but I'm just going to dry that super quick. So please let me know if this is loud. This is usually not too loud. Um, I love this heat tool for that, but uh, let me know if it is and I will mute. Okay, so that should be good enough there. And then now I will go ahead and paint around those little circle areas. You could go ahead and mask them out if you want, if you're following this um, in the future, but I'm just going to paint around them. Now take your time. I'm going a little quick just because I don't want this to take too, too long. But if you're not used to painting around little objects, definitely take your time. There's no rush. And I would also probably let this uh, dry for a minute or so if you're using a heat tool or a hair dryer. Um, just because it will affect the drying time of your paint, so your paint will end up drying a little bit quicker. We can always come back in and just, you know, drop color in as you're going, drop more paint in, and that will keep that area wet longer. So just like that. Okay, and then we'll go in, grab this like burnt umberish mixture, I'm gonna call it, just so you guys can follow along with whatever paints you're using. And I'm thinking I'm gonna put this more, just tap in a little bit off down here at the bottom. I feel like there would be more shadow down there. And I might even grab just a little bit more And just tap that in there. Okay. And then we'll do the same thing with his other little foot. And if you do go over an area, just dab it up real quick if you catch it, and then you can kind of just continue on. No big deal. That's why I usually have some paper towel or some Kleenex or something in my other hand, just in case I want to dab my brush off or, you know, quickly pick up some paint. I definitely notice, oh, I'm sort of like a uh, little crooked there. <laughs> I just realized. It's all right, as long as everything's still in frame, we're good. Um, but yeah, I definitely notice this paint dries much lighter than my Winsor & Newton, um, for example. So maybe if you're using the Paul Rubens, go a little bit punchier with your colors if you want them to be a little bit darker. You could always go over and do another layer, and we may do that if we have time at the end, but I'm gonna kinda get through this so you guys can at least see what I'm doing. Just mixing up a tiny bit more of that color there. So for this one, I'm mixing these two colors here. It's a burned sienna and a burned brown but mixing them together makes sort of like a burnt umber type color, so that's why I'm saying burnt umber, just so you can follow along. And then again, I'm just dropping this in down here. And 
And then maybe we'll start working on his face since those areas should be dry now. So I'm just mixing this up, making sure it's nice and mixed. And then we'll come in and do the exact same thing. Painting like this is just so relaxing because you're just putting color down, having fun with it, throwing in some more color, seeing what it does. I'm really enjoying like watercolor. This is one of my first mediums that I ever tried and I wasn't that great at it obviously when I first tried it, um, but I've fallen in love with it so much. And I'm still not perfect at it. I mean, I've been sort of dabbling in watercolors over the last, I'd say probably two years, maybe. But this, this year I'm, you know, committing to getting better at watercolor. And I used to use a lot more like colored pencils and pastels, but to be honest, just dropping a little bit of color in here, a little bit of that pigment just to keep that wet. Um, to be honest, I'm finding that if I want to get detailed works, I can do that with watercolor too. It just takes a little bit more time, you know, or if I want to get it, keep it nice and loose, I can do that too. So I'm finding that watercolor is so much more versatile than some other mediums. And it can be quicker to if you like a looser style. So I'm just really, really loving watercolor. All right, and then we'll grab some of this dark color here. That might be a little too dark, maybe a smidgen of water in there. We'll see as we put it down. And I'm going to keep this more like down here and kind of around the sides because his head is round. There would be a little bit of shadowing around the sides, maybe some areas a little bit more. So sort of where things connect, I might drop in a little bit more pigment just to show in certain areas. It is shadowing a little bit more, maybe around some of these areas here. But again, I don't want them to look like a cookie either. Um, so I don't want it everywhere. And then if I feel like I went a little too heavy handed in some areas, I can just come in and kind of smooth out some of those areas. And then other ones I'll leave where the shadows will be a little bit darker. Like around here, I want to smooth it out so it's not quite as apparent, but just a little bit. And then the other areas I will leave, I'm going to Add just a little bit here because I'm just noticing there's an area where his arm does not connect. So we'll drop a little bit in there. Okay. Now I think these areas are down good there so we can do his little body. And same techniques.
So I'm just filling in. Now some of these areas down here will be a little bit more shadowed, or you can leave them not as shadowed if you prefer seeing more of his little uh, tan color. And then grabbing some of this color. Just a little bit of water. And then I'm going to go ahead and drop this in kind of down here. Might even go a little bit darker because this area would be uh, more in shadow. And then I'm just dragging my brush around some of these areas and again where I drag it um, that color is not going to spread out as much. I'm just going to dab up a little bit there where I got it on the heart. And just ever so lightly just the tip of my brush coming around just to create a little bit of shadowing under there. And then we'll rinse that off, dab that off. And if there's any areas where I want to push that pigment back or kind of spread it out a little bit, I can do this and just kind of move it around a little bit. You want to be careful that you don't have more water on your brush than what is on the paper or you're going to create some blooms. So be very careful with that and make sure you dab it off really, really well. Okay, and I got some there. Okay, so I think um, that's probably what, uh, maybe I'll just give this a quick dry and then we can finish up his little face. enough there and again I think I want this part of his face to be lighter like his feet so I'll grab a little bit more water get a little bit more watered down version of this yellow ochre and burnt sienna and I'll get that in here maybe just a smidgen more because this does dry so light There. And then if I have any extra, again, just picking that up. And then I'm just going to dry that really well, too, so we can put the dark of his nose in. And we'll work on his eyes. Okay. That should be good there. So I am going to make his nose a little bit darker, so we may use this burnt umber mixture that we mixed up here. I'm just mixing up a little bit more. And I think that's what I'll use for his nose color. Now 
Now go down to a smaller brush if you need to. I'm just trying to be as careful as I can getting up to my lines. And then I think I'm also going to take this color around his eyes. Uh, so we'll have like a brown color and then I've got a little highlight and then the inside of his eye will be sort of more of a black color, like the button color of the eye. But I think I want a little bit of brown around. So I'm just carefully trying to follow my lines. If it's not perfect, that's totally fine. There we go. And then I might grab a smaller brush here. So <clears throat> I do have a size two brush on the side. So I may go ahead and grab this and I'll use this color, might make it just a little bit darker and that's what I'll put in his little like mouth area with. There we go. So that's all right. And I'm gonna go ahead and dry his eyes real quick and then we'll put the um, dark areas in. Actually, while we're, while we're waiting for that to dry, why don't we take this dark color because I do wanna make the outside of his ears a little bit darker, I think. We'll see how that looks. So I'm just gonna mix up a little bit of a watery version of that and I'm just gonna see how this looks I may regret it we'll find out Okay, I think that looks cute. So I do like that. Okay, that's cute. So I'll go ahead and dry that real quick and I'm drying his eyes at the same time too so we can go in and put our darkest color in there. And then I may go back and add just a little bit more shadowing in the ears. I'll see what it looks like afterwards. I don't want things to be too dark either. Okay, so I've got a little bit of this uh, coal black here, which is just a black color. I'm just gonna mix it in with this. This is just what was on in the Paul Rubens palette. So you could mix a dark gray, you could mix a dark brown, whatever you want. Um, and because this is a smaller area, I may go down to a smaller size brush. So I think I'll grab this size six brush Oh, hi, Snow. Welcome. Oh, thank you so much. He says, I love the bear. <laughs> thank you. All right, so we'll put this dark color in. Now, I do have a couple little highlights in the eye, so I do want to pay attention to go around them. 
Thank you so much for joining the stream. I hope you're enjoying it. There's one eye. Again, trying to create a little white area there. Now I think it got a little wonky here, so I'm just going to take that, dab that up. I went a little too far into my brown, and then I can just come back over and fix that edge a little bit. There. So I like that, and we'll do the little heart afterwards. Alright, so maybe we'll move back over here and we'll start working on the icing. and. Uh, Actually, did I want to add a little bit more darkness to his ears? We'll leave that for now. We can always do that later. So what I might do, because we're going to start using a little bit more brighter colors for these areas, I'm just going to get rid of the paint that's here just so I have a little bit more space for some other colors. And how is everybody doing so far? I hope you're enjoying your Sunday. I hope I'm still in frame. So any preference for colors for the icing? I thought it would be fun. Um, I want to do these in like a light pink, a darker pink. <clears throat> Excuse me. These will be like different colors. Um, and then I thought maybe that in a pink. So I'm not sure what I want to do for the icing over here. We could go pink as well and just keep the pink theme because it's Valentine's Day, I guess. Uh, if you guys want to do that. Well, it's not Valentine's Day today, but it's going to be. So I'll start mixing up a pink then. And uh, if anybody has any suggestions, let me know. So in this palette, I really like this red matter or this matter red, and it's more of like a pinky red. So if you have like a Quinn magenta or something on the pinky side, that would be equivalent to that. And I'll just start mixing it up over here. And I do want a little bit more water here just so I have enough area to cover. So just adding some water to that. And then we're gonna sort of do the same technique where we'll go and put this in and then we can drop in some shadow colors. Oh, that really pops against the, the brown colors that are already there. And keep in mind that these colors do dry very light, these paints, the Paul Rubens. So we'll see what color this ends up being. It might be a very light icing color, and that's okay. We'll have some darker pinks going on as well. Okay, so I'm going to dab that brush off and just pick up some of the extra color, because if that's super wet, um, our shadow colors are going to just go all over the place. And I think I may even just drop in a little bit darker of this color. Maybe a tiny bit of my purple color as well. Uh, this one, I think. Just to give it a slightly different tone here. And we'll just drop this in in a few different places and see kind of how that looks. So I kind of like that. And then if we want to create a highlight on our icing, we can just pick an area and kind of just dab a little bit of color off here and there where it might be a little bit lighter and brighter in the middle. 
and then I'm going to just spread this dark color just a little bit there. So that kind of helps it look like there's some shadows forming, like the icing actually has form on our cookie. And I'm kind of really liking that color combination of the pink with the purple, just a touch mixed in. If you're using a red, you could also add a little bit of a green into it and that will just mute it down a little bit and uh, darken it as well. So whatever your preference is. But I wanna keep this bright, so that's why I'm choosing to use a purple mixed in instead. You could also use a blue and that would give you like a purpley uh, tone as well. Whatever you feel like. So how is everybody doing this morning? Are you painting along? Are you just watching? Are you painting your own thing? Again, just dabbing up a little bit of extra paint or water that's on there. And then I'm gonna go and just get a little bit more. Oops, that might be a little too much, so I'll add a little bit of water to that. Just mix up a little bit of a darker value. If it's a little too watery, again, we can just dab off any water that's in our brush, like any excess water. And just coming around some of these edges again. Now I don't go around every edge completely. I kind of just pick a few areas where I think maybe, you know, there might be a little bit more icing accumulated. You can kind of go by where you put down the uh, cookie colors as well. So there would probably be a little bit more shadows there. And again, in some of these areas, I'm dropping just a little bit more in, and then some it's just a little sparser. And then dabbing that off, and then I'm gonna kinda just pick up a little bit of color here in a few areas. You could always do this before you lay down your um, shadow color there if you want. But I'm just gonna kind of pick up a few little areas just to create some kind of highlights on here. Doesn't have to be perfect or anything, but just gives us a little bit of dimension. And I hope it's looking okay for you guys. Um, I might even just come in and just, so I just dabbed my brush off a little bit and just where it's looking a little bright in these areas, I'm just gonna ever so slightly pick up some of that pigment, there we go. And then continuing on. And for this, if I go outside of the line, it's totally fine because some of that, you know, pink would be shadowing on the cookie as well. So you could go a step further. If I was making this like a realistic, like super realistic looking cookie, I would probably even put some of that pink into the shadow areas on the cookie. But these are just gonna be fun, quick little illustrations, I'm calling them. <laughs> But you can, you know, take the techniques that we're using here today and do as much or as little detail as you want. Make it your own. So like here I went over a little bit, so I will just go and pick up just a little bit. And then again, grabbing some of our dark color there. And I'm 
just gonna come along here and just dab up. There, on the outside a little bit. And just no strategy to this, just really dropping it in where I want it. And then I'm going to go ahead and just pick up a little bit where there might be a few little highlight areas. Or if your icing tends to start getting out of hand or anything. I think that I like that as well and if you guys are enjoying this video um, it would be helpful if you hit the like button as well I hardly ever remember to say that in my videos um, so it does help me out so I think we'll go and we'll do this heart over here now so since we've got this pink mixed up I'm just gonna mix these all together and I'm gonna mix a little bit too. I mixed it right out of the pan. So I'm still using this uh, more cool red for this. I just want it a little bit more concentrated and then I'll probably mix in a little bit of that purple again for some of the shadows. Um, you could mix in a little bit of a brown. We'll just see how it goes. So I want this to be a little bit more concentrated. Picking up a little bit more water as well. Now, I don't want to make this too dark that I can't see my little wording here, but I think we'll be okay. And you don't have to add the wording into yours. I just thought it was a, a cute touch. Just coming along and trying to smooth out that edge there. There we go. And then again, I'll dab off and just pick up any extra color. I'm just smoothing everything out. And then I'm gonna go in and grab a little bit of that purple. So this is almost like a dioxazine violet color. And I'm just gonna add this in here just to get a little bit of a darker color. Almost like a mauve type color. Again, dab off my brush if I've got a little bit too much. And then I'll start, uh, I'll start somewhere where I know there'll be more shadow like around the arms here just to see how far that's gonna spread. I might even dab off just a little bit more water. And again, I'm just ever so slightly dropping it into a few areas just so I can 
show the form of this, that it's not like a flat object. And I'll grab it just a little bit more concentrated. Just dab it off a little bit and then come right in here where our dark, darkest shadows would be. Just where he's like holding and squishing it. And I kind of like that. And if it gets a little out of hand, you can just again dab that brush off. Just come back in and kind of push back any of that pigment if you need to. I think I like that. I don't want to play with it too, too much. Okay, so I might go ahead and just dry this real quick. And while we have our dark color mixed up, we can do our lettering. there. And again, I'll go down to my smaller size two brush. Um, I'm going to grab some of this dark color that I've got mixed up here. Just mix it a little bit more concentrate it, And I still want it to be more on the pinky side. So again, you can always try it um, to see what it looks like. And I kind of like that. So I think that's what we'll go with here. And I'm just going to be as careful as possible. I might tilt this just a tiny bit. And I'm just going to try to write this in. You can always practice this on a piece of paper <laughs> before you try doing this. And if you don't have a steady hand, this can be a little challenging. but it's also good practice. And don't worry if it's not perfect. Or leave it out completely if you want to. Totally fine. Now I like using the silver black velvet, especially the size two. It has a really nice fine point, but you could also use something like a script liner or a liner brush, something that has a longer point that might be a little bit easier for you. I think I just started with this brush doing details with, and so I'm a little bit more used to it. Um, but it'd probably come out better if I did use like a liner brush or something. So use whatever you're more comfortable with. Oh, that one's coming out a little wonky, but that's okay. Not horrible. I like that. I hope you guys can see that okay. Do you want me to zoom in a little bit more? Because I wanted you to be able to see the palette too, um, how I'm grabbing paint. But just let me know if you want me to zoom in even more because I can totally do that. 
because I realize if you're watching on a phone or something, it might be a little bit small to see that, but uh, you can always leave that out. So do you guys have a preference um, starting on the macaroons or starting on the little candies here? I kind of really want to paint both, so it doesn't matter to me. And like I said, for the macaroons, I might do like a lighter version and a darker version. So maybe we'll just get like a little um, base layer down and then we can work on some colors over here. You know what? I think these would be pretty quick to do too, but we'll get some base layer on these and then uh, then we'll go from there. So I'm gonna use that uh, pink red color. So if you have like a Quinn magenta or something, I'm gonna get this pretty watered down because one will be a little bit lighter pink and the other one will be a little bit darker pink. Kind of want it maybe just a little bit darker than these, or I guess it's okay if it's the same darkness. It doesn't matter, I guess. And I think I'll do white cream filling. Now, when I was looking at different um, references for this, the one that I liked didn't have any filling in it, so I'm kind of just making that up. Um, but that's okay, that's what you get to do in your artwork. You get to make up the things you want to um, do. And I'm gonna come along just above where I want that icing to be and I'm going to fill in this spot too because this would be sort of our base color there too and then we'll drop in some darker color again. And if I can see any areas starting to dry I'm just going to try to drop in a little bit of color to keep them wet longer. And then I'll grab a little bit of that darker color, just a little bit, and where I know there's going to be shadows kind of coming around here, where this macaroon's on top of it, um, sort of around some of these sides here. Okay, and then I'll come in and just dab that brush off and just smooth these edges because I want this to be a bit more smoother of a look. So I'm just smoothing those shadow edges so they blend just a little bit more. I might drop in ever so slightly a little bit darker shadow in here just so it really does stand out. And I might extend it just a little bit and again, I can just rinse that off, dab it off, and then smooth out that edge as well. Now I don't want these shadows to get carried away. And then I'll come in and just sort of pick up a little bit and make a little bit of a highlight again. just in a few areas. So just something like that, a little bit of light catching and it doesn't have to be perfect. So we'll leave that like that. And while I have the light color here, we might as well do the bottom part underneath the icing as well.
So just getting a, a base layer in there right now. And we can grab a little bit of that dark color and if we want, just ever so slightly, drop in a little bit underneath the icing just to start creating some shadow wings and right here. And we'll rinse, dab off, and again, just like soften out. Okay, so we'll leave that. Um, I might just go ahead and dry that so we can do this one. So you can see how our transitions are a little bit softer here compared to over here um, because I want these cookies to look softer. So that's the reasoning there. I'm just going to grab my brush again. I'm not sure what size I was using, but I'm going to grab my size 8. And I want this one to be darker. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and mix up all of these colors here so we have like that mauve color. I'm going to add a little bit more water. I'll bring my jar over so I don't risk it dripping on my artwork um, and then I'm just going to mix up some more of that pink, some more of that purple so I get a color that I like and I'm looking for a little bit darker, maybe a little bit more almost like a wine red type color, something like that And we'll do the same thing. And I'm bringing this color over that, uh, right above where the icing is too. And I need a little bit more water in my brush. There's a little bit of that cookie texture showing through back there just because I figured at the angle of this we might see a little bit back there. Feel free to add that or leave it out. Totally up to you. just going over just to make sure everything stays a little bit wet so we have a little bit of time to play with it. And I'm going to mix a little bit more of that purple into that just to get a little bit darker color going. And I'll take my paper towel and just dab it off so it's not super wet. And then we're going to go around and create a little bit. It's too spreading too much. Just dab a little bit more off. And just creating some shadowing again along the edges. and we'll go in and smooth it out. Now I don't want this to drop down too much so I'm going to leave the shadow up a little bit because we've got like technically the edge of the cookie is up here 
and then this would be part of the side cookie where the icing is. Okay, I'm gonna go dab this off really, really well, and then again, just come in and smooth this out just a little bit. Because I want these cookies to have smoother transitions, smoother edges. I'm gonna come in and just make this area here just ever so slightly lighter in color. And then come in and lift a couple little areas for highlights. And just be careful if your paper's starting to dry. Yeah, that's good like that. And then again, just the tip of my brush and just if I need to add any more shadows, but I think that's pretty good down there. I actually kind of want it to be ever so slightly lighter, just above where the icing is. Again, rinse, dab. And then I'll just come in and just soften that edge out a little bit. Okay. So I like that. Take a little bit of paint and do the bottom part of the cookie as well. Need a little bit more water. Okay, so we'll go ahead and let that dry for now. And I think I wanna throw some color down on these, but my lines are just a little bit too dark. So I'm just gonna take my kneaded eraser here and just lighten them out. Now, where I've got the words, I might leave those a little bit darker because we will go over top with darker paint there. If you guys have any specific colors that you want to see, um, let me know. But I think I'm just going to choose some bright, bright Valentine's uh, colors. So some reds, yellows, oranges. Maybe we'll do a blue and a green as well. And these ones are going to be pretty simple because they're just going to be two tones pretty much. Okay. So I might stay with my size eight brush here and let's start, um, let's start with the pink color first. So I need this to be pretty light at first and uh, maybe we'll do this one pink. So I'm just gonna cover the whole thing in pink and then we'll come back and do a little bit of shadows. I just want these to be pretty simple And maybe that's a little, a little dark. I might just take a little bit of pigment off there. So again, dabbing, and I'm just gonna just lift a little bit here. I guess I do want it to be a little lighter. There we go, that's better. 
Okay, so then let's do a, a yellow one. Um, I guess let's do this lemon yellow color. I haven't really used this one a whole lot yet. So again, I'm just grabbing a lot of water with this to hopefully water it down a little bit more. I think I had a little bit of pink left in my brush, so it's not coming out super lemony. So maybe we'll do another one that's a little more lemon yellow. That's kind of nice. Okay, and maybe we'll do, um, maybe we'll do an orange one. So why don't we grab a little bit of red here. We'll mix it in with this and sort of make a nice orangey color, even though I have an orange right there. Um, we'll kind of just mix our own. And then I'm gonna add water to that to get a very light version. So I used a more warm red for this, uh, more of like a Windsor red instead of like a cool pinky red. That would give you a better orange. I like that. Okay. And then what else do we want to do? Let's do, let's do a purple because we haven't done anything. We'll use that uh, dioxazine violet purple that we were using to mix in. So again, we're trying to stick with some of the same colors. I just want that to be more watered down. I might even make this just slightly lighter in color. So I'm just picking up a little bit of that excess pigment there. And then let's do some blue. So I don't really have any super bright blues in this palette, but I'm thinking if I water down this cobalt blue, that might give us like a nice um, light blue. So let's give that a try. So if I put it over here, and then I'll grab some water, really water it down. I think actually, I've still got some purple in my brush there. Okay, we'll try that again. <laughs> it's a little better, grab a little clean water this time. We'll kind of see, see what that gives us, I guess. We're just experimenting here. So it doesn't really matter too much. But I feel like this palette is missing like a really nice bright blue, like a cerulean blue or something. But I suppose you could always just add that or have a, a pan off to the side. It's not so bad. And then let's make like a really nice light green. So I kind of like this yellow green here. So maybe we'll do that. We'll see how that stands out if it's watered down a little bit more. So let's grab that and I'm just gonna do it over here. That's gonna be really yellowy. Well, that might work out okay. That might be fine. So we'll add some water to this and just see how it looks. Well, that's gonna be very, very yellowy. So maybe I'll grab some of this uh, tree green instead, which is a little bit 
little bit darker. That still seems quite yellowy, but that's a little better. I might grab a little bit more. Not quite the color I was going for, but that's okay. Still bright. Okay. So let's see here. Are these first ones dry? Yes. These three are dry. So we'll go in and start putting those shadow areas in. And I might drop down to a smaller brush. So maybe a size six brush for this. And for our pink one, I'm just going to take a more concentrated version of that pink color. So something like that. And I might dab just a little bit off. My cloth is getting a little bit little bit dirty. And I just kind of want to have these like two tones. So sort of a little shadow area there. And then I might try using this brush to see if I can put some of the words in without getting my hand into some of these areas. I may need to go to a smaller brush, but I'm gonna give it a try. Yeah, no, I think I'm gonna have to go down <laughs> to my smaller brush. So we'll grab that size two brush. has a bit of a finer point. Maybe I'll do the words for this one and then we can leave the other ones out until the end. Totally up for you guys unless you want to see me um, put some words on all of them. I like this one, soulmate. I'm getting better at not having such a shaky hand when I practice like lettering like this though. I usually have a super shaky hand, so this is hard to do. And especially live, I feel the pressure. <laughs> That one got a little wonky, so you know what? We can just go in, dab that part up, and just put it back in. And I just want to darken a couple of the letters while I'm in the groove. Okay, there. So I like that one, just cute and simple. All right, so I'll grab that size six brush again and we'll grab our yellow. Mix a little bit of that orange into it just to make it a little bit darker. Like a darker, warm yellow version. A 
I'm going to dab off and just pick up any of that excess color like that. So we'll do our orange and then maybe we'll mix in just a little bit more red. You could mix in a little bit blue too if you want it to go like complementary. Maybe we'll do that. We'll just grab a touch of that cobalt blue. That might be a little too much. And we'll just kind of see how that looks. Yeah, I like that. So it just kind of tones it down, darkens it up just slightly. I like to use complementary colors in some of my shadow areas too, but for this one, I'm trying to keep it simple as well. But since we use that cobalt blue for one, I figured let's throw that in there. And okay. So that's the orange one. So we'll finish the shadows on these and then we'll go back to those cookies and work a little bit more on them. Let's do our purple one. So again, grabbing a little bit more of that dioxazine violet type color, adding a little bit of water to it. We could also add a hint of that blue to it just to make it a little bit bluer. We'll see how this looks. It's a nice shadow color there. And again, I'll just dab up any extra paint and just fix some edges. And then we've got our cobalt blue here. Since we put a little bit of the blue into the orange, why don't we take a little bit of that orange and put it into the blue and see what that gives us. And you can see it just darkens it ever so slightly and kind of gives it a more muted tint to it. I like that, but that might be a little dark, so I'm just gonna dab a little bit off and kind of pull that paint along. And to do the words for the rest of these, like we did on the pink one, I would just use the shadow color just to keep it consistent. But I wanna get back and finish the, the macaroons before I've gotta stop this stream, so we're just gonna carry on. Okay, so we'll do the green one here and we'll grab a little bit of that green color and then maybe we'll add some of our red to it. So we were using like a pinky red. Ooh, that was way too much. So again, I'm just gonna ever so slightly mix a little bit of red into it just to darken it slightly and then I'll dab that off because I've got too much water on my brush. Oh, hi, Wen. So nice to see you here um, from Seattle, <laughs> late to the party. Well, you know what they say, better late than never, right? Thank you so much for joining. So I'm just finishing up the shadows on here. I showed how to do some lettering here and there, and then we're going to go back to our macaroons and finish those up. So feel free to watch the replay if you're interested. This is just fun painting, nothing too stressful. Okay, so that's that. And I will go back afterwards and uh, do the words with all the shadow colors, the same shadow colors that we used, but just for time's sake, we're gonna go back to these macaroons here. And I wanna add just a little bit of detail above and below our white icing here and a little bit of shadowing in the icing um, so I'm going to take this dark color that we sort of mixed up here. It's like a purpley uh, pink maroon color, kind of like that. 
and I'm going to get this and I'm still using my size 6 brush. Use whatever brush you have. Um, how are you doing this morning, Wen? I'm just going to dab this off and I'm going to start creating some little like like bumpy areas, shadow areas in here and some like below the cookie texture, some above. Some are going to be a little bit bigger and darker. Some are going to be smaller and I'm just sort of doing this randomly just to create a little bit of texture in here now because these are just quick little illustrations I'm not worrying too much about placement or anything or accuracy but you can definitely do as little or as much that you want so again I'm just making random little movements with my brush here just to create a little bit of texture And then if I feel like it's getting a little dark, I can just come along and dab some of it up because this bottom cookie is going to be a little bit lighter in some of those shadow areas. So just dab that off. And we're just creating just some texture in there. It doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, so like that, and we're going to do the same thing in the top cookie here, macaroon, I guess. So this one can be a little bit darker. And some I want coming from the top edge of the cookie, and some I want coming from where the shadow area is, or the shadow, the icing area. And some are going to be smaller in some areas. And that kind of trails off there. Now I would, you know, put a little bit more effort in if I wanted this to be super realistic. But this is just like the quick and dirty version. I'm just going to come along and do a little bit of dabbing up underneath here where like the edge of the cookie is. So this is the side of it and I just want to create just an indication of where that edge is sort of coming from. Just a slight shadowing underneath and then I might even get rid of a lot of that color and do the same thing down here just so where like the edge of that cookie is starting to form. And then with that lighter color, you can kind of go in and get a few more little spots in there if you feel like you need it, just for some texture. Especially in some of the, the bigger areas, there would be a little bit more texture going on. So just, I'm just really, and when I talk about creating like texture, I'm really just like doing these random little like marks with my brush. Okay. And then we'll create a little bit of icing shadow. So I might just hit this with the heat tool real quick. Oh, I got a little spot on the paper there. OK, 
Okay, and I'm going to take uh, a little bit of this cobalt blue, a little bit of our violet color, and just really water this down just to create like a very light, um, like bluish purpley color. Um, could add just a touch of pink to that to make it like this very light, like violet type color. So you can make it whatever you want, but I want it to kind of go with the um, cookies too, because they're a little bit more on the cooler pink side. So I'm making a little bit more of a cooler shadow color, and I'm just going to start dropping this in mostly on the top side. And I don't want to cover all of the white either, right? Because this is white icing. So I'm just dropping it in and in some of the bigger areas, I'm dropping in a little bit more some of the smaller areas a little bit less. And then I will go and just do a few little spots on the bottom as well, like maybe where the cookie part comes up a little bit and causes a bit of a shadowing. And then in here, there would be a shadowing too. So I'm kind of following the shadow that I made for the cookie overlapping. And then, oops, that was not, not the shadow color, this color here. And I'll do the same thing up here and it's just like a very light indication it might be hard to see on camera but it's really just tinting the paper in some areas because i still want that white to show through and then in some of these areas it would be a little more shadowed Okay, so something like that. There, and I'm just kind of looking, seeing if there's anything left that I want to add. How are you guys doing so far? I know this is a little, little bit longer of a stream, but uh, maybe I picked too many items <laughs> for us to do, but I was just really having fun with this. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I will go ahead and finish these sayings off camera unless you want me to do them right now, but uh, we did this one together and this one together, and I think so far, I, uh, I think I'm good with everything. I like how it came out. I hope you guys enjoyed this stream. If there's any last minute questions or anything, let me know. Now, if I was doing this as a picture on its own, I would definitely add some shadowing underneath, but because these are just little illustrations, I was thinking more of things that could in the future be like stickers or little mini prints or something like that. Aw, thank you so much. Um, little Miss Nat says it's all adorable. I love that. Thank you. I'm, I'm so glad you guys are enjoying this. Um, yeah, but if I was doing this like just as an illustration on its own, I would definitely come in and add some shadowing under there because you don't want your items just floating in uh, space. But I hope you guys enjoyed this. I will um, link another live stream here. Last week we used these Paul Rubens ones and we did some florals. Um, so I may end up doing some more loose florals in the future as well. But I think this is going to be it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.